Greetings everyone from sunny Hawaii. Today we're going to talk about 4K, 4K televisions, 4K streaming, 4K gaming a little bit. Do you need a 4K TV? No, I do. Okay, so 4K, what is it? It's a new television standard and it stands for 4096 resolution horizontally and 2160 vertically. One of the things we're doing is we're changing the way we link to formats now. Before we had, it was always vertically, and it referred to the number of pixels vertically. Like 720p means it's 720 lines, so there's 720 pixels vertically. And then 1080p had 1080 pixels vertically. And what we're doing now is we're switching it, so we're going off the horizontal resolution now instead of the vertical. And I think we'll continue that if we go to 8K, which is the one soon. There's already a few 8K TVs. Anyway, so the official standard for 4K is called Ultra High Definition Television. So we had 720p was high definition, we had 1080p which was true high definition, and now we have 4K which is ultra high definition. And it's also a cinema standard. A lot of the latest digital cameras the last five, eight years have all been 4K, such as your RED and that sort of thing. And it's better to shoot and then dial down so a lot of professionals have been using the standard for a long time. Now one of the advantages, I haven't quite decided that they're going to do it yet, but I hope they implement it when they go to 4K, is the changing of the ratio. So right now your 1080p television is a 16.9, which means the horizontal resolution the ratio to the vertical resolution. Old TVs that are square, those are 3.4. Now what we should be going to, in my opinion, when we go to 4K is 21.9 which is the ratio it gives us a little more room horizontally versus the vertical room, which is a little more pleasing to the eye. And it brings us closer to the golden rectangle. And the golden rectangle is a concept that shows up in biology, physics, art, and even human evolution that we're attracted to this particular ratio. And some people call it a sacred geometry. I'll make a separate video just about that. So hopefully the, the manufacturers are gonna do that right now. I still see them kind of fudging with it. But we would, it would be better for everyone if they adapt closer to the cinema standard to be closer to a 21.9. Or the option is you just put little black bars on the very top and the very bottom of a 16.9 television. And you still get that wide, expansive picture that, that has that wow factor. Because it's closer to the golden rectangle. Now, you say, I can stream in 1080p barely and you're gonna like maybe go to 4k and I'm not gonna be able to stream at all. Why do I care? Well, okay, not that bad. First off, both the Xbox One and the PS4 are expected to be able to be upgraded to the new H.265 standard, which is a high efficiency video coding standard. And what that means is it's compression to put the information on the internet through your lines into your house with less bandwidth. And the new standard, when it applies, most of it's gonna be in hardware, but we're supposed to be able to upgrade the PS4 and the Xbox One, that's the rumor, to 4K streaming whenever they decide to add that. Zappy, you ask, how does this H.265 codec make this compression work that we can stream even more efficiently than we're streaming now? Let's take a look at this picture. Half of this picture almost is blue going up. Another big chunk of it is, is tan or brown and then a lot of it's green. And it, my brother likes to say, if you have four points in any picture, you can usually figure out what most of the picture is. We've got the sky that's kind of blue. We've got the trees that are green. We've got the sand that is brown. If we just look at those colors, we have like 80% of the image. So all these pixels are hanging out with their friends. Like most of this is all brown, this is similar brown. So you can say, hey, you know, over in this area, all this brown is pretty much the same friend. They're all hanging out. They're having a good time. When you go at your friends, you have a good time. Same kind of thing. Here we have well, half the picture is almost brown. And even my shirt, it's just a different shade of brown of that brown. Then we look at the green and we're like, oh, we have green here. We have green here. We have green over here. So that we can just tell the computer, okay, a lot of this is going to be green. So we go by what your neighbors go by. And then we take out the blue. So all we have to do is fill in a little bit of red over here, this thing over here. Oh, this is there. And then these blue trash cans over here and the little cars zooming by, making a lot of noise. You guys are so noisy over there. Okay, so there's a lot of tremendous math going on, but the computers are doing it, so we don't care. Currently what we're using as our video standard 
is H.264. And that does a really nice job of compressing video so we can send it through the internet without using enormous amounts of bandwidth to send every single pixel all by itself. And what's happening is we're upgrading to a new standard, which is the H.265 standard, which you've heard about which stands for High Efficiency Video Coding H.265. So what that does is it allows us to press the video further without compromising quality, send half the information of what we would send with 1064, and we still have the same quality picture with 1065. So if you currently can stream a 1080p movie, it's only twice the bandwidth to stream a 4K movie with the new standard, even though it's four times as much information. It's basically a 1080p picture another 1080p picture, another 1080p picture, and then another 1080p picture, and that's 4K. So it's four times the information with only double the bandwidth if everything works out right. Now, one of the nice things about having a larger, or having a, a larger format, say going to 4K, is you can have a bigger TV and you'll get smaller pixels, or you can double the size of your TV and you'll have the same size pixels. So you can have a bigger TV and it really does give you better quality. And it's not as important to have native content, I think, as people like to assume. Like, take a DVD player. DVDs have not changed or improved in years. But a DVD movie on your 1080p television still looks pretty good compared to how it looks on your CRT television. A couple things are happening. One, the interface is gone, so we're using what we call progressive scans. So instead of saying a picture, and then a picture, and then a picture, and a picture, and it's interlaced, it takes all that information and gives you a solid picture, and then a solid picture, and then a solid picture. It's less jarring, it's jittery. Another thing that, that's happening is the digital picture is a lot easier to expand with a good, powerful set of computers. You can expand the picture, you do what's called anti-aliasing, which basically gets rid of a lot of the fuzzy, jaggedy, jaggedy edges and makes fuzzy edges, which is more pleasing to our eye. It's less specific, but it's more pleasing to the human eye. But because of the new coding standard, it's gonna cost even less than twice as much. It's about 64% effect of the compression right now, so it, it's only double the, the data information. And as um, the internet speeds increase, it's going to be less significant. Okay? I don't see bandwidth issue being a tremendous block at this point, uh, especially because most people won't have televisions for at least another year. Although, Christmas holidays are coming up, it's a good time to give a 4K TV. Um, okay, so how does this magic compression stuff work? It's high efficiency video codec, which is the h Four, and now we're doing H.265 because if you actually look at the amount of information being streamed, it's tremendous and it totally would overload most people's internet. Think about it. A 4K signal is if it's the regular like a 1080p blow up and not the wider one, it's 8 megapixels. And if it's the full wide one like a theater uses, it's 11 megapixels. And that's each frame, say 24 frames a second. That's a whole lot of information you're pumping through your internet. And what we do is with the, comp the new compression, is each computer, the computer that does the compression has to work three times as hard as the H.264. And your computer on the receiving end, whether it's your Xbox One, your PS4, your computer, your Amazon Fire when they come out with that, or whatever you're using, your Roku, it has to work three times as hard to uncompress the picture. So we're, we're gaining the efficiency by the amount of stuff we broadcast by half, but it's causing the computers to work three times as hard and it doesn't matter as much because they're, it's easier for them to be upscaled than it is to upscale the internet. So it's not as bleak as it looks. You can probably stream, if you can stream 1080p now, you are probably have a good chance of being able to stream native 4K. And there are several sources right now of native 4K. One being Netflix, another being Vimeo, Vimeo YouTube, Amazon Instant Video started doing 4K last year, and NASA has just added a 4K channel, and I hear it's a good reason to buy a TV to sit and look at the space, look at the rockets take off, and be sure to get a subwoofer because you want your neighbors to know you're watching rockets take off. That would just be fun. As far as gaming, I don't think the consoles really are going to have much, if any, native 4K gaming because they just can't really push it up that high. They're nice. They have 2.3, I mean 1.3 or 1.8 uh, teraflops in their GPU, but to push 4K, unless you're, you know, dumbing down the graphics a lot and making them pretty simple, at that point, why do you need to upgrade? It? So I think we're good, but let's think about it. Is it really that important that we make everything native? 
it's always nicer. So don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it's worthless. It's always nicer to have native resolution with whoever you're watching. But it's not as significant as people think. Think about your DVD player. DVDs have not increased. They're still based on an old standard. They're still an interface in their native format. Now, most of the progressive players now, or players that are progressive, allow instead of like an inner picture and then a picture and a picture where they're overlapping, it does a progressive scan where it takes the whole picture and shows you that one. And it goes to the next frame, shows you that one. Next frame, shows you that one. So it's doing a lot of math to make the picture a little better. And I think it does. You can watch a DVD on your 1080p television, and you know what? It still looks pretty good. It looks a lot better than it did on your CAT, CRT TV. So even though it's not native, it's actually even six times, more than six times less information on your old 48p DVD than what your 1080p TV can show. It still looks better. I have friends that have 4K TVs, and we've gone over and watched them native. We've watched a game at 1080p that's being upscaled. Quite frankly, it looks really good. I, it, it's nice to have things upscaled, but we're not seeing the jump that we did when we went from like 48i to 720p or 1080p television. I went from 48i to 1080p, progressive scan, high speed, all kinds of stuff, and it was so much better. I felt like I'd never watched a lot of these movies again and even watch them because now they look so much better. So yeah, it's going to look better going to 4K, but it's not the leap. You don't feel the, the dramatic wow that you did before when we went from a non-digital to a digital picture because that just improved picture quality so much and broadcasting so much. So it's better. It's not as it's it's. Don't hold back just because you don't have native. Now also, what this is going to do is it's going to kill 4K Blu-ray. Sony's been rumored to come out with a, a 4K Blu-ray any day now, any year now. It's been rumored for over a year as the new replacement format. Traditionally, computer formats, storage formats, have two upgrade cycles. So we had the DVD, then we went to Blu-ray. Usually that's it. Just look at uh, the old floppies. We had the, the eight and a half inch, if any of you have ever seen that in a museum or remember that. Then we went to the five and a half inch. We had two there. We went to double this, which is twice the information. Then we came out with the smaller ones that were based on the ones in Star Trek that were hard that fit in your pocket. That had 720K, and then those were upgraded to, ooh, get this. 1.4 megabytes on a single floppy. That was a big deal. And then they upgraded those to 2.8 megabytes. Nobody bought them. Nobody bought them. They were really expensive. The storage was expensive. Nobody bought them. So trying to go to a 4K standard on Blu-ray, not likely to happen at this point. It's kind of too late. If 4K streaming is coming on and it's coming on strong and it looks like that's what it's happening, what, what it's doing, why do we need another physical format? Unless, of course, you don't have Area 2 high quality uh, internet interface, then are you watching this? Are you downloading me? Uh, otherwise, I just think that streaming is the next step for 4K. I think it's coming. So my friends have 4K TVs. It's awesome. If you want to give me one, I'd have to give you my address. That's good. <laughs> Anyway, I just want to show you. Somebody gave me a little gift. I joke about it every time. Somebody really did. It's a little funny, but adorable. And I'll, I'll take a little picture of this and show it to you. It's a little funny, but <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you like something. Like, subscribe, respond if you want. Punch the like button and uh, have a great day. Go out and shock somebody with your amazing knowledge. All right, this is Zach again. <laughs>